This episode of In The Making is brought to you by Full Sail. It's the first device to ever manufacture tools and parts off of planet Earth. We're at NASA Ames, about to meet a company that's 3D printing in space. They're called Made in Space. There's a lot of reasons why you want to do space now. Right now, there is a business for space. We're going to enable entrepreneurs and scientists to do research and real business on the space station quicker than they ever could before. But more importantly than that, it's the future. It's the future of you know, the vast riches that space will offer in terms of metals, energy, um, platinum group metals. All that stuff will be available to the entrepreneurs that go after it. More importantly than that, it's backing up the biosphere. There has been several mass extinctions in the history of our planet. It makes sense to put a little bit of energy into having a backup plan, a plan B, just in case something doesn't go the way that we expect it to. So there's several challenges you, had, you have to tackle in building you know, 3D printers for space. The obvious one is building a printer that works in microgravity. We had to build a printer that um, you know, surface tension was the most dominating force, not gravity. These printers are off-gassing you know, harmful gases and nanoparticles that are unsafe for the, for the crew. So we had to filter out the particles and the gases. It actually did it in such a way that it makes the, the air cleaner. Um, so while we're sitting in here, the air is cleaner. What we have also have is a contract with NASA to develop a recycler. So you could take those 3D printed parts that aren't working, um, or parts that you no longer need, or even just other things, trash around the space station, throw it in the recycler, and new feedstock comes out that you can go print again. So an astronaut's time is worth roughly $50,000 an hour. So you don't want them playing around with the printer for five hours to get it work because there goes a quarter of a million dollars. We will be operating in the other room over there, hitting, hitting the print button, and the astronaut will essentially only have to uh, you know, turn it on and then take out the part is, is, the, is the ideal goal. This right here is the printer, and this in many respects is the brains. This is the you know, electronic systems. These first two 3D printers are going to be polymer-based. Um, the first 3D printer, which is more of a science experiment, more of a historic event, is going to be an ABS printer. Uh, the second 3D printer, which is also going to be polymer-based, but it's going to have more higher-end aerospace-grade polymers, um, such as PEAK. But then we're also developing and working on metal technologies. Um, it's called Lunar Simulant, and we actually printed this with the technology that we're sending to the International Space Station, adapted to print with material from the moon. And that's the real exciting uh, future of what we're doing. This episode was brought to you by Full Sail University, whose 12-month online program guides students through the process for developing a tech-based product or service company. Courses include topics such as the ideation process, product design and development, and financial strategies, all taught by industry-experienced instructors. Students graduate with a fully formed business strategy and the tools they need to pitch to investors. To Full Sail's Project Launchbox program, students receive a MacBook Pro preloaded with Apple's complete line of creative software tools, as well as degree-specific sets of pro-level applications. To learn more about this degree program or any of Full Sail's other degree programs, visit fullsale.edu forward slash in the making. I remember when we showed up with the, with the printer at NASA, one of the guys was like, you guys are here early? What, what's going on? <laughs> he was confused. He's like, we've never seen this before.